Help! I'm trapped inside a tiny thrift store TV. Welcome to Hacker Week. That's right, we've got more electronic stuff to be hacking from the thrift store. We'll talk about that in a minute, but first, new camera. How's it look? I uh, decided to not use the Lumix GH1 um, for a couple reasons. One being when I'm trying to shoot up close stuff, handling an SLR style camera for me and the stuff I do and wanting to zoom in and out, you have to rotate the lens to zoom on that camera. There is no button. Just kind of didn't work out. I still may use it as a second video camera sometimes, but my main camera is the one you're looking at right now while you're seeing the footage of it. It's a Panasonic HCV 770 and it is a pretty nice camera. Hope you like the new camera and the cool part is I've got this remote control function so I can zoom in and out from my smartphone. So that's kind of fun. Um, I'd like to zoom back out, please. There we go. Okay, so let's get going on what I've got here to play with today. Let's take a look at what we got. We found a little mini TV. Um, it was 50% off day, too, at Habitat for Humanity. They're a, a thrift store. Um, and the, the TV was like six bucks. The uh, VHS camera was like seven fifty dollars uh, out the door. So pretty cool. already have been inside this and it uh, it didn't work when I plugged it in. It's got a, um, let's see, right there in the back there is a power jack, that one, 12 volts, but I found a power supply I was able to put in there with the right polarity, could not get it to turn on. Power switch is like right there on the top and the, the pins for it are right here. I was poking around in there seeing what was happening. It's getting voltage but it would not turn on connected to that jack on the back. So I decided to just tap into the battery terminals on the back and hook up my 12 volt power supply there and voila, it turned on and it worked. Um, well, it worked after a bit of repairing on this circuit board right here. You see the jumpers that I put across things where it was broken. I just scraped it clean, but got it all working again. And that's basically the main controls. Uh, they used to sit right in this section of the plastic case. At any rate, I got it working. And um, there is a um, output to the viewfinder. Let's take a look at that. So we're pointed at the uh, the Dino family, and there they are in the little viewfinder. The autofocus does work. Right now I'm pretty much pushing it to its limit of how close it can get. When I push in that macro button, I don't see any change there. But anyway, it works, and um, the little CRT is outputting video, so I know the thing has video out. But there's no um, like RCA jacks or anything. What there is is a AV out right here with I think it's what eight pins. So I need to get in there and poke around and see if I can find which one of those are the audio and video out signals. And uh, once I establish that, then I want to connect it to this little TV. But I'm going to do some things to that first. But let's check out that little TV right now. Isn't it cute? It's just a little TV. And it's got um, UHF, VHF, low and high, AM and FM tuner. Ooh, and you know what? I think the plastic, oh man, the protective plastic is still, still on it. Oh, I love this. I love these moments. You ready? This is one of my favorite things ever. Peeling the protective plastic off from things. Oh, yeah. Look how shiny and perfect it is. No dust. It's like a little mini clean room environment. Mm, okay, maybe not so much anymore. So let's see. Let's turn this on. I got it plugged in. It's got its own little power supply, a wall wart. Uh, I think that's it. Are we on? We should be on. Why are we not working? Are you plugged in all the way? What's your problem, little TV? 
Okay, got it. It was just not plugged in all the way. Static. So all we get is static because there's no VHF broadcast anymore at all, or UHF. Dead air, dead bandwidths. That's UHF. Um, that's VHF high, VHF low. So, anyway, there it is. But, here's the issue with this little guy. The only jacks on the back are, let's see, external antenna in, and then there's the power in, and that's it. And then there's a selector for um, the extension power, battery, what is it, or, yeah, battery power or charge. And I guess, uh, oh, and vertical hold, brightness contrast. I guess in the bottom of here, there's a battery, or batteries, oh my god, there was a place to put two, four, six, eight, ten C cells. So you could actually run around with your little portable TV, watch TV anywhere you go. Good times, modern times, you betcha. Well, I want to get a signal into there, so how am I going to do that? Well, if I had a little RF converter, like the kind you used to get with uh, video games, you tune the tuner to channel 3, and it just takes a composite video signal in and turns it into RF out on channel 3. I need to find one of those. Well, I don't have one of those. Um, I just had to look around, and I don't have one of those RF converters. If I had an old VCR kicking around here, I could pull one out of that, because they all had that output on the back where if you didn't have composite in on your television you could just run a cable to the back of the TV and tune it to channel 3 and in there it just took the composite signal turned it into an RF signal on channel 3 simple or like I said old video games Pong had it some of the Atari games I think had it they came with it I could probably find one on eBay too if I went looking around I could just little RF converter but the alternative is maybe, just maybe, inside here I can find where the tuner turns it into a video signal and then the video signal actually gets processed and put into the little CRT. But let's take this thing apart and see what we have going on inside. Some of you longtime viewers may remember this little carriage I built for mounting a camera overhead. And, you know, it's still there. It's still functional. I can move it around and mount the camera right here. I've got this setup, which is a boom for microphones for doing podcasts. And I put a quarter 20 bolt in instead of the other mount for microphones. And I'm going to mount the camera on that today and see how it works out. Let's see how this camera mount works. I kind of like it so far. Um, pretty easy to move around. I can kind of reposition it where I want, in or out. Okay, that's pretty good right there. I like it. I like it. I like it. Let's get Mr. Camera out of the way. And let's see what we've got here. It's looking like there's probably just a couple of screws right here on the bottom. Might be something inside the battery tray. Nope, nothing there, but there are two screws right there that we'll get off first. Take those out and I'm betting that things will just kind of pop apart after that. I don't think there's too much holding this together. And now this should just come right off. Look at that, the whole back just comes away. A couple wires attached, but there it is. So this blue wire and red wire run to the battery pack. We're just going to snip those. And this runs over to a speaker. And the speaker looks like it's held in with, yep, just some uh, hot glue. So we pull the hot glue pieces off. And then we can just slide that speaker right out. There we go. There it is. Ooh, it's pretty. It's cute. Let's keep going here. So the circuit board is just all loose here. It just slid into the front panel in a couple of slots. But what I want to do is I want everything free floating. I've got an idea for this, um, this project. What I want to do is take all the bits and pieces of this and just suspend them, hang them in midair. 
<clears throat> kind of like it's just hanging there in free form open architecture no case around it no anything take that camera from the camcorder and also mount it in some way where it's pointing in the same direction as the screen and then it's going to basically be a hanging art piece and as you come up to look at it you will become part of the art because your face will be seen by the camera and output on the CRT. So it's uh, participational electronic sculpture art. I just made that term up. I think it's a pretty badass term. So let's see, I'm gonna move this stuff carefully to the side. And now we're gonna undo all of this business. out of its case oh don't poke a hole in that happy little speaker wow look at that it's pretty cool looking already I like it I'm gonna undo the little wire tie thingy that's on that wire and uh, that'll zap ya <laughs> Jerry Hellsworth was telling me once that she was showing someone, be careful and that, you know, not to touch that because you'll get zapped. And as she was showing somebody, she, she got zapped. So, yeah, there you go. I'm just going to leave it right here like this. And maybe see if we can figure out where the tuner turns the RF signal into a composite signal. I think I might see where that is already. May have found a way to put a video signal into this. If I zoom in there you'll see that little box with a bunch of RF coils in it and such. That's the tuner and that's what takes the um, signal coming from this tuner section up here and turns it into a video signal that can be sent to that chip right there. I did find out that pin five on that chip is the video input. This is the cover to that tuner. It's a TDQ4D. Finding a data sheet on this is next to impossible. Um, other people all over the net have tried and failed, but it does have pinouts labeled way down under there I don't know if I can get you to see those or not. Probably not, but right underneath the base of that is the pinouts, and the second pin over is called IF. It is labeled on the board in there. You can see it right there. It's that pin that's the second one over from the right, IF. That is the video out from that little tuner module. So if I isolate that pin, or for that matter, maybe just remove that entire tuner, I may be able to input a signal right there, like from a DVD player maybe. I've got a DVD player, I can just put a DVD in, uh, put it on play, and then just take a cable out and connect it and see if we get a signal going to the CRT. I'm just going to desolder this with solder wick. Just heat it up, put the solder wick on there, and suck it up. How many people am I driving crazy right now by saying solder? <laughs> That's the pin I'm talking about right there. That's the IF pin and it was bridged across that tiny little gap with a bunch of solder so right there where the screwdriver is now that's where I want to feed a video signal and see what happens and I'll just have to do a ground probably well over here in this corner uh, right there I know that that's a ground point I could just put my ground there 
and oops, I might be bridging it. Let's get it right. There we go. And then I can catch a ground over here. Nothing connected to the TV right now. I'll turn it on to TV. And uh, no more static. So I know I've got uh, got it disconnected. And it's 60 frames a second here. So this is doing some pretty weird stuff with the refresh rate on the video. Uh, let's get the DVD connected up and see what we get. Got a DVD player connected through here. And uh, I'm going to turn on the DVD player. There should be a home screen. Let's see what pops up. Ooh, there it is. But it's it's out of horizontal sync. Um, I've seen this on a blog somebody else did. They were doing the same thing I'm doing right now, trying to tap into this. And they came to the conclusion that the signal was inverted or something. So they ran it through um, just a simple transistor inverter circuit and it fixed the problem so maybe I'll try that aha uh -huh. wait a minute there's a lot to be said for just poking around on the signal path from that tuner if I go right to pin 5 on that chip hello and that's the home screen in sleep mode with a little bouncy ball. I'm going to turn the VCR off. I'm going to turn the tuner off. Well, the TV off. And I'm going to solder that wire to pin 5. Now we'll turn the TV back on. And let's turn the DVD player back on. <laughs> yeah! We have composite in. Cool. All you need to do is just tap right straight into that pin 5 and isolate the tuner. Excellent! Now I can move on to tearing apart the camera. But first, let's play a DVD. Spinal tap. So, we got a signal. It's playing. It's okay. Maybe um, let's try going for sound because right now all I've got is static. Got another RCA connected up. Jumper wires. There's my little pokey wire. And if I tap into the center tap, <laughs> spinal tap, center tap of the volume pot, yeah, then I can right, get volume. Twisted. And I can actually turn it up and down. But I've still got that background static going on. So if I really wanted to, I could probably poke around enough and figure out where the audio signal comes from and tap into it there. But not so concerned about audio as much as I am video. And I've got video, so let's move on. Okay, the composite signal coming out right here, audio video out is there so I need to get all this business off this side. I tried pushing the eject button on this and it runs, the motor runs, but nothing happens. So, um, yeah. I've also got my power uh, connector to think about here. There's going to be a couple of wires going to that. There it goes. There we go. It's like an open face video camera sandwich. I'm going to catch a ground over here on the power input and just test over here real quick and see what I got. Yeah, I've got 12 volts over there. Now let me check it here and see what I have. Okay, nothing on the red wire. 4.5 volts positive on the brown wire. So I can start writing all these numbers down now on a piece of paper. So here's what we got. Brown, 4.5 volts. Red, 0 0.03 volts. This is all positive voltage. Orange, 13 volts. Yellow, 0 0.01. Pink, 9.1. Blue, 0 0.01. Violet, 0 0.01. Gray, 4.5. So we've got some commonalities here. The brown and the gray both have 4.5 volts. 
so we can safely say that that's a pear. And the blue, violet, and yellow all have 0 0.01 volts out. One last wire. That's it. Now we're getting down to the bare bones. Changed my mind. I'm not going to go poking around uh, any further. What I am going to do is got the camera running. Uh, there is an image right now over here showing up on here. Um, I've got the TV going. I've got a ground connected, but the video input is nowhere. It's connected to this red wire. I'm going to just go ahead and probe some of this stuff and stay away from the high voltages. The first thing I'm going to try are the blue, violet, and yellow because they're only outputting 0 0.01 volts. So let's just see what, what we get with them. So let's try, let's try violet first. And there's nothing there. How about the blue? Nothing there. Oh, hey, look at that. It's the brown or the gray, perhaps. Yep, there's the brown one. And look, there he is. There's, there's Dino. Awesome. Cool. Now we can start thinking about how to turn this thing into a hanging sculpture. Well, that works. Copper wire to the rescue. Just twisted it all around and attached it to the frame and pulled it tight. I mean, it holds it in place and uh, looks kind of cool. There it is. There I am. Um, there it is. Uh, it's all wired up. I connected the camera board to the television board right there, that little wire running across. And so it's running all one power supply now instead of two. I really tried to figure out a way to get rid of this whole board and just run power right there. But there's multiple voltages, couldn't really pull it off. And in doing so, I ended up screwing up the uh, momentary contact switch on off thing here where you just touch it, it turns on, touch it, it turns off. I killed it, yeah, killed it. So I just bypassed the little relay that should have been latching, probably killed a transistor. Uh, and it's just powered. As soon as there's power going in, it's powered up and running, and that's okay. So um, got the, the television all wired up there like I showed earlier, and we're ready to hang this thing up. But the power supply that I had that came with the TV, I tried to run both boards off from that. It's only one amp power supply. It would not keep up. It kept fading in and out on the camera. Not the television, but the camera. The camera draws quite a bit, I guess. Um, it needs some overhead, and it didn't have enough. So I found this power supply. This uh, Hypro, what is that thing? Uh, 12 volts at 4.16 amps, so plenty of overhead there. Not a problem with that power supply. So, okay, all wired up, let's hang it up. Time to start hanging this thing in space. I've got a hook up here out of copper. I'm gonna use some, uh, I guess about 20 gauge copper wire wire it up to the CRT. I'm going to hang that up first and take it from there. That's the heaviest thing so I figured I'd get that out of the way first. Up every shop should have a ball peen hammer in it. Tiny one. These are very handy for doing stuff like that. side. It kind of balances out. Sort of. <laughs> sort of not really. Whoa! Hello! Shit. I wonder if maybe um, other way around. Okay, let's do this. Let's sit it on the bench. We'll hook this side in here. And then let's just test it out right here on the bench. That's better. That's better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Put that up there. Oh, that's nice. That balances out well. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a wrap. 
Yeah, wow. <laughs> oh, fun. Good times. Good freaking times. It's got to be hanging like that. We're still a little off balance. If it was right there. reasonably close to it. Okay, well, let's just bend the bastard right there. Jesus, is this, that wire is hard to bend. Look at that. That's it. That's it. That is it. That's it. That's it. It, 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 it. it. Let's get you away from that flyback transformer, though. I don't like that. One more time. Double check stuff. Power's all good. Definitely got the positive lead. Going to the positive lead on the other board. That's all good. Nothing short out there. CRT's all good. Let's plug it in. Give you a look. Say hello to yourself. Hi. Wow, this is cool. Hi there. Got this hanging up now. Out here in the hack shack. I freaking love this thing. This is one of the coolest, um, crazy ass builds I think I've ever done. Really, really like it. And I like the static, I like the static going on um, on the audio. It's kind of like a statement about you know the whole TV analog thing is done and there's nothing but dead air. All you get is static now. And then this, when you walk up to it and you go, "What is this?" and you're looking at it. And um, it's kind of like a statement about what are you doing when you're watching TV? You're just looking at yourself. <laughs> uh, this is going to be fun in a art gallery, which I think um, that's where it's going to end up. I've been totally inspired now. I'm going to do more pieces like this and stuff like Audio Man. And uh, I was talking to somebody the other day that does uh, showings at a place here called the Campbell House. It's in Southern Pines and they do uh, openings all the time and shows in various galleries. Anyway, it's the Arts Council of Moore County and uh, I showed the guy pictures of Audio Man and he says, Wow, how long have you been doing this? How many pieces do you have? Do you want to do a show? <laughs> so. I'm like, sure, let me put some stuff together. So over the next several months, I'll be doing more things like this and maybe some more sculptures. I want to do a bird next that tweets and lights up. And it's made out of copper. I want to do more of that copper skeletal stuff. By the way, this piece totally was inspired by Emily V. You know who you are. Thanks, Emily, uh, for the inspiration. There's a video on Emily's channel of a smaller version of this done with a tiny little CRT that was in a viewfinder. I will put it in the description down below, the video description. We'll have the link to Emily V's video, so go check it out. And, well, I guess, I guess we're done. So it's time to um, sign off. But I'll do it right here on this little TV this time. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing and subscribing. Don't forget to check out the merchandise down below. The Hacker Week stuff. Selling t-shirts now. If you want one, buy one. If not, whatever. 
But thanks a lot for watching. I hope this inspires you to play around with some electronics. Be careful with that big fat red wire or whatever color it happens to be on the back of a CRT. I did not discharge the CRT during this whole build. And I know that the safety police out there are going to make some comments about that. And that's okay. That's, that's their job. That's what the safety police are there for. To remind us of the obvious. So thanks, safety police. But you know, it was turning the thing back on and off a lot. So what was the point of discharging it? Just be careful and don't grab the red wire. Anyway, till next time. Keep on hacking.